bragging. She's running for president. Hell no. Ever since President Trump won the 2016 election, liberals have been searching for the magic bullet that sealed it for him. They seem to be sure that there is one secret ingredient that if they too can use, they'll be able to place even the most unlikely candidate in the Oval Office. It appears that they have settled on that secret ingredient being someone who is wealthy and a TV personality, based on the most recent outlook for the 2020 election. Forget the fact that President Trump appealed to those who weren't particularly wealthy just hardworking, and the ones who have been overlooked because they didn't fall into a special minority. They pretend it had nothing to do with the fact that middle America wanted someone we were sure had experience balancing a checkbook who wouldn't cut the legs out from under businesses and by extension the economy. However, the general consensus seems to be that the DNC just needs a famous person, and they'll be all good. Throw a minority status in there and a little pinch of Hillary's feminist followers and the trifecta is complete. At least that is what NBC seems to be thinking as they shove their pick for a 2020 contender down our throats. Up to now, that would-be candidate has been just a rumor, but the Gateway Pundit reports that as of last night sources close to Oprah Winfrey are confirming that she will do it if the people want her to. NBC News and others in the media are promoting Oprah Winfrey for president over her appearance and speech at Sunday's Golden Globe Awards broadcast where she received the Cecil B. DeMille Award. Update Los Angeles Times reporter Amy Kaufman spoke to Winfrey's long-term companion Stedman Graham after the show, I asked Stedman if at Oprah would run for president. It's up to the people. She would absolutely do it. Even though she's been denying that she would be running for months now, she seems to have been setting the stage recently. Her fans, already in love with her showy philanthropy and liberal views on social issues seem poised to paint her as the antithesis to President Trump and his common-sense approach to fixing the nation's problems. If there was any doubt about Winfrey's intentions, her Golden Globe speech should put any doubts to rest. We know the press is under siege these days. We also know it's the insatiable dedication to uncovering the absolute truth that keeps us from turning a blind eye to corruption and to injustice. 2. To tyrants and victims, and secrets and lies. I want to say that I value the press more than ever before as we try to navigate these complicated times, which brings me to this, what I know for sure is that speaking your truth is the most powerful tool we all have. And I'm especially proud and inspired by all the women who have felt strong enough and empowered enough to speak up and share their personal stories. Each of us in this room are celebrated because of the stories that we tell, and this year we became the story. But it's not just a story affecting the entertainment industry. It's one that transcends any culture, geography, race, religion, politics, or a workplace. So I want tonight to express gratitude to all the women who have endured years of abuse and assault because they, like my mother, had children to feed and bills to pay and dreams to pursue. They're the women whose names we'll never know. They are domestic workers and farm workers. They are working in factories and they work in restaurants and they're in academia, engineering, medicine, and science. They're part of the world of tech and politics and business. There are athletes in the Olympics and there are soldiers in the military. And there's someone else, Reese Taylor, a name I know and I think you should know, too. In 1944, Reese Taylor was a young wife and mother walking home from a church service she'd attended in Avenal, Alabama, when she was abducted by six armed white men, raped, and left blindfolded by the side of the road coming home from church. They threatened to kill her if she ever told anyone. But her story was reported to the NAACP where a young worker by the name of Rosa Parks became the lead investigator on her case and together they sought justice. But justice wasn't an option in the era of Jim Crow. The men who tried to destroy her were never persecuted. We see Taylor died 10 days ago, just shy of her 98th birthday. She lived as we all have lived, too many years in a culture broken by brutally powerful men. For too long. Women have not been heard or believed if they dare speak the truth to the power of those men. But their time is up. Their time is up. Their time is up. And I just hope, I just hope that Tracy Taylor died knowing that her truth, like the truth of so many other women who were tormented in those years, 
and even now tormented, goes marching on. It was somewhere in Rosa Parks' heart almost eleven years later, when she made the decision to stay seated on that bus in Montgomery, and it's here with every woman who chooses to say, me too. And every man, every man who chooses to listen. The only flaw in this brilliant liberal plan is that they founded it on a misunderstanding of the American people. We didn't elect President Trump because he had been on TV or because he was rich, we elected him because he promised to deal with the issues that the hard-working middle class cared about. Giving away cars and recommending books is all fine and good, but unless you can make sure that more of those cars are made in the United States and the books are printed in English, there's really no point. No point.